Yeah. Okay, so you guys want to have a seat? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about, uh, I'm going to kind of always look this way, so whatever it is for, for the camera's sake. Um, hi kids, how you doing? Good. Good, all right, glad to see you guys here. I know it's been a long day for you um, in, the, in the store, but uh, this is fun stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about... I don't know, Noah Jr., I kind of like Noah Jr., but uh, for, the, for the sake of the camera, okay, we're going to talk about Chinuch, education for children. You can call it Chinuch, we call it Noah Jr. at some point. So, do you guys know what yeshiva is? Yes or no? No. Okay. Do you know what school is? Yeah, I know what school is. Right. Okay, good. Do you like school? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So, Torah school is not so different from regular school. But the difference is the subjects that you learn and how the day goes. Like, you guys have recess? Yeah, playing games, learning, counting, right? Spelling, all, all these things. And do you have books? What kind of books do you have? Yeah, books. For school. What kind of books do you have for school? Math books. Math books? Spelling books. Spelling book. Okay, that's good. So there, way back, like thousands of years ago, there was Adam. Raise your hand if you know who Adam is. Okay, good. And raise your hand if you know who Adam's children were. Who were they? Abel and Cain. Then Adam had another son. Remember his name? <coughs> Seth. And then he had a son, and then he had a son, and then he had a son, and then he had a son. <coughs> and so there became the flood on this planet Earth. Did you guys know there was a flood? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, who was that story about? Noah. Raise your hand if you ever heard of Noah. All right. And Noah had how many sons? <coughs> Three. You guys know the sons of Noah? Noah had three sons. Shem, who was the oldest and the most righteous. Japhet, wasn't so righteous, but it wasn't so bad either. And Ham. And Ham was the lesser of the three. Then, how many of you have heard of Abraham? Okay. Abraham was Shem's son, 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 so forth. Abraham had a son. What was his name? I Isaac. Isaac. And Isaac had a son. What was his name? J Jacob. Jacob. And Jacob had how many sons? Twelve. Twelve sons. And I won't ask you their names because that's probably pretty hard. Oh no, they, they know. Got oh yeah? Those ones I never I never know those. What are Jacob's twelve sons? You can sing this song. Yeah. All right, so I guess we know, we definitely know that he has a child from Jacob's 12 sons. All right, so Jacob taught his 12 sons Torah. Right? Yep. Where did Jacob learn the Torah from? His father. Yes, but he also had more than one teacher. Because his father learned Torah from somewhere else. Hashem. What's that? Hashem. Yes. But how can that be? How can it be that I said yes to your sister, that he learned from his father, but you say he learned it from Hashem, and I said yes to both of you? How in the world is that possible? Because Hashem told him first, and then his father went. Okay. But there's a bit of a better answer. Can I tell you a, a, a better answer? Not that your answer is bad, but there's like a, a standard answer, an answer that all the books write about. I'm going to tell you a story now. Tell you a story? Okay. The story goes like this. Remember we talked about Noah? And Noah had a son named Shem? Shem opened the first 
Torah school ever. Pretty interesting. What was the name of that school? The Yeshiva. Yeshiva means school. Of Shem and Aver. Yeah. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Aver was Shem's grandson. So Shem and his grandson Aver had a cave in the city of Sfat in the north of Israel. I used to live next door to it. It's just a cave now. <laughs> so you have Shem and Aver open in a cave in Israel, a big cave. They had a school where they taught Torah, and as you have told us, to Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Right? But wait a minute. Didn't you tell me that they learned from God? Hashem? So how can that be? Who knows what a prophet is? What is a prophet? I know that he learns Torah from Hashem and gives it to other people. Okay. So how... Now do you understand? Can you tell your brother, or me, both, how was it possible Jacob learned from his father and from Hashem at the same time? You just gave the answer. Um, he learned from Hashem taught him and his father taught him? If Hashem told his father and his father told him. Then it's like he's getting the words from Hashem? Yes, very good. That's it. That's a prophet. A prophet learns Torah from God. So if I was a prophet right now, God would talk to me and tell me stuff, and I would tell you, and I would tell you stuff. So, it would, so if you learn from me right now, and I was a prophet, are you learning from me or from Hashem? Both. Both, exactly. So that was the yeshiva of Shem and Aver. They were, they were teachers in a yeshiva, which means school, and they taught Torah, but they, their Torah came from Hashem. So yeshiva, Shem, and Aver, and they taught Abraham, they taught Isaac, and they taught Jacob. They also taught Joseph. Therefore, the, they learned Torah from their teachers, and they learned Torah from Hashem. The Yeshiva Shem and Aver, it's hard to talk, that's a big word. It's uh, Yeshiva Shem and Aver always is, uh, it's existence, an easier word. There's always a, a Yeshiva in the world. Today there's a Yeshiva Shem and Aver. But it requires, we need people to open up schools and to teach kids the Torah and the Torah about Hashem. When that happens, it's a yeshiva of Shem and Aver. What's the name of your school? So are you guys in a yeshiva of Shem and Aver? There you go. You guys are proof that it's happening. So what we want... Do you like your school? Yes. Okay, so it's a good school. So if it's a good school, don't you think other kids should go to the yeshiva Shem and Aver? Yes. Because it's good. And we want what's good for other kids. If you say your school is bad, then we don't want any more yeshiva Shem and Aver. But you say your school is good, and you like your school. Do you learn Torah in your school? Mm -hmm. yes. Do you learn about Hashem in your school? Yes. Then I guess you go to the yeshiva Shem and Aver. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have parents that have built for you the school. Hashem wants that school everywhere on earth. All the kids would grow up learning in the yeshiva Shem and Aver. Now, you said you learned spelling and math and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know the Torah has math in it? Yeah. What's the, did, did you know your alphabet in Hebrew? Mm -hmm. What's the first letter? Aleph. What, what number <laughs> is Aleph? What is it? Uh, no, you One. One. Very good. He said Echad. Oh, and said, so, and yeah. then she said olive. Yeah. And she said olive. <laughs> so, but he said in the, uh, in the Hebrew, yeah, right. olive fates, the first letter is olive, but it also stands for the number one. 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 What's the second letter of the alphabet? Bet. Bet. 
Does bet have a number? Two? Yes. What's the next letter? Gimel. What's its number? Three. N. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Dollar. Dollar is four. Yeah. A. A is five. Vav. Six. six. Zion. Seven. Chet. Eight. eight. Tet. Nine. Nine. Yud. Ten. Now be careful. Be careful. I'm warning you, be careful. The next letter is cough. Be careful. 20. It skips from 10 to 20. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Lamed. 21? No. Oh, how did it skip? 30. 30. Now you're counting. Mem. Yeah. Nun. Samech. Ayin. Pei. Sadiq. Kuf. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful to really think. Remember, you're in this, are you in the school of Shaman Aver? Yeah. Okay, does God teach you? Yeah. Then start talking to God. Because I'm going to ask you a very hard question. And only God can tell you the answer. Let's see if God tells you the answer. Raish. What number? Kuf was 100? Mm -hmm, 200. Oh, Hashem comes through for us. <laughs> there you go. Very, very good. Shin. This is very good. Taf. Now it's going to get almost impossible. Huh? Even God can't give this one. <laughs> <laughs> the final cough. You know those final letters? The five final letters? Sophit? Final Sophit. Kaf Sophit. How much? 1,000? Not yet. <laughs> 500. Mem Sophit. 600? Nun Sophit. 700? Pei Sophit. Sadik Sofit. Back to the beginning at Aleph. But when we go to the end, you don't say Aleph. You call it Elef. And it is? You already said it. One. One what? One thousand. One thousand. So now that we've proven God is the teacher of, of Yeshiva Shem and We've had divine revelation in our midst. This is what happens to the Yeshiva Shem and Aver. Did you think? Mm -hmm. Did you get answers from God? Mm -hmm. Did we talk Torah? Mm -hmm. Did it have math? Mm -hmm. A little bit of spelling and reading? Mm -hmm. Bible history? Mm -hmm. And you guys are apparently scholars in the Yeshiva Shem and Aver. <laughs> it broke all the rules of syntax, all the rules of school, and that's how it should be. Learning the divine wisdom, real smart Torah from God and what we're trying to do is bring all the kids in the world to learn from the Torah from God Amen. and we Amen. believe that when that happens they'll be just like you guys believing that God can, can speak to mankind you agree? That's all. Right. you agree? say Amen improved divine revelation <laughs> I haven't done a Noah Jr. in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next on the agenda. Uh, Gare. Where's Gare going? That's the question that gets me in trouble every time. That's why the way we go conference, that's where we got in trouble. That should be last. <laughs> <laughs> As long, if I start saying, bless their heart, cut me off. We're not... <laughs> um, let me think where I want to go with this. Where is Gare going today? This is the thing. I don't like to talk about bad stuff. Um, we should be well on our way with gear to building Yeshiva Shem and Aver everywhere and getting our kids involved. And we're unfortunately, we're, we're still stuck in proving if gear exists. It's a total, like, uh, con not contrast, but it's um, another word. We're, we're way over here, but we have to pretend like we're way over here. Um, so really, we're probably somewhere in the middle. 
uh, it's such a, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's the question, it's the right question. I don't really know if I have an answer. Um, because the world in reality won't let us answer the right answer. Right? We should be having problem-free, learning the Torah, growing, joining on to Israel, uh, pilgrimage to Israel to visit Jerusalem, all these things, uh, bringing back the Torah. We have a lot of ideological directions where we want to go, where we could go, or we should go. But we're still proving Garrett. So why are we proving Garrett when you guys had a guy at the pizza shop who supports Garrett, knows Garrett, and they're dumbfounded that there's issues with where Gare is. He's concerned, <laughs> as I'll bring a bless your heart in, he's concerned that he's already saying Hedrin, and that's a guilt trip. So I say that because the guys that get Gare in Judaism, and remember how I, how I say get Gare, Gare is not a, a, a fan page of memes. It's where the Lubavitcher Rebbe says, Ritva, and all the sources. That's called getting Gare. Getting Gare in the Torah tradition. The reason why those people are not getting gear, and again, elevate what I get gear means here. Uh, it's not the Facebook version. Um, there's a guilt trip of I get gear. And we saw it twice today, right? It is forbidden and guilty to get gear. I'll fill you in because I don't know, uh, you, don't, you don't know what happened today. Uh, I'll fill it in, is that right? Yeah. So we were in the pizza shop, and there was a guy who was getting a, a, a bit of chizik, Hearing me supposedly give a sheer to these people, and he liked it. He said, "Yeah, go go get him, Tiger." And he said, "What's it about?" I said, seven laws of Noah." He said, "I used to teach seven laws of Noah." I said, "Go say hello," and he did. So he says, "When I was in yeshiva, I learned the seven laws." It turns out his son went to yeshiva with me in Spot, Israel. So small world, and we started talking. And part of the shtick. He felt guilty for having an association with seven laws. Why? Because the yeshivas learned like two tractates out of the entire shas, entire oral Torah. He learned Sanhedrin. And God forbid we would never learn Sanhedrin. Why? You caught this? You see what's wrong with this? In the yeshiva world, it is not officially or technically frowned upon. And I'm going to give a, a, another example in a second that we had a little experiment. Right? If you say you learned Sanhedrin, it's just a bit stunning and shocking and odd because nowhere do you run into somebody that learns Sanhedrin. For no good reason. We don't learn Tanakh for no good reason. On our way out of the pizza shop, this is really a classic of all time, right? Yeah, I think so. I was telling Nathaniel the story that at my class at the wall... Rashi writes in his commentary, I don't know the meaning of this word. Is, am, I not, am, I, am I alone here? Or is there a support in saying, Rashi probably wrote those words. He thought, hey, I don't know what this means. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Right, Rashi thought, hey, I don't know what it means. He wrote, I don't know what it means. Guess what? Rashi didn't write that. Rashi what? did not write that. Oh, okay. But I just told you he did write it. So how do, we, how do we resolve that ridiculous contradiction? I'm telling you Rashi wrote it, and I'm also telling you Rashi didn't write it. Can you resolve that question? Have you ever heard of the Sifri? Yeah. So if you read the Sifri, on the exact same verse, the Sifri says, I don't know what this means. So where did Rashi get it from? Sifri. And he copied down verbatim from the Sifri. I don't know what this means. Everybody that would learn Rashi would say Rashi wrote and thought, hey, I don't know what this means. But guess what? Rashi never had the question. The Sifri 2000 or 1,000 years earlier said, hey, I don't know what that means. And Rashi copied it down. So what I'm telling Nathaniel is, why did nobody ever look at the Sifri? He says, did Rashi quote the Sifri? No. I had to go and find out the system that Rashi just copies and pastes everything. So Rashi never wrote anything. And then I had to search and find out where Rashi wrote it. So a, a Hasidic guy is walking out the door. And I said, watch this. I stopped him. I said, hey, do you learn a Sifri? Stuck. Wow. He <laughs> says, come again. I said, do you learn a Sifri? He's like, 
the guilt's coming up. I go, man, I might get in trouble. So he took the Nathaniel answer. I learned Rashi, and he quotes the Sifri. Right? <laughs> and I, <laughs> so I said, did you ever look up the Sifri? And, he's, he's, and I know why he's going through a perplexed moment. Maybe we shouldn't be looking in the Sifri. No one ever said don't look in the Sifri. But no one ever said to do it either. So that guy's like, you know, he, 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 saw, he came out of the park and he's looking around like, whoa, what just happened? So he says to me, did you learn a Zohar? Yeah. I mean, it was mind boggled. So that's where we are with Ger. And that's a non-answer, but it's a real answer. Ger is from sources that are not Baba Kama, Baba Messiah. There's, there's, there's 30, how many, how many uh, Gemaras are in Shas? 36 or so. Right? Not every mission has a Gemara. So there, let's say there's 30, 30 X, whatever, track dates of Gemara. How many of those do we actually learn? Three? Maybe four? Brachas, if you're really weird, learn you learn Shabbos, if you're really weird. Bava Kama, if you're really yeshivish. Bava Metziah, if you're getting weird, but you're not quite weird yet. Out of that, I think we're stuck. I think that's about it. The briskers learn um, the, the offerings. They're super weird. But but acceptable weird. But we're not there. It's like, it's like if a... Uh, uh, I guess, you know, the Hasidim were Hasidists. Okay, they do it. It's weird. We don't do it. That's where all the gear sources are. They're in Shabbos. They're in Yavamas. They're in Arachim. If you go to Yeshiva and say, ah, I learn Arachim. Is a what? Is that even, is that, is that, what is that? It's Talmud. Oh, but not, is it real Talmud? Yeah, it's real Talmud. The gear sources are everywhere, including Baba Kama, right, everything? So you have these people. And Morris, you, you saw, I'm just kind of going off the cuff with this one. You know, there's no easy answer where it's gear today. So pardon me for that. Um, some people know there's gear Torah, non-Jewish Torah. Can a non-Jew touch your wine? Can a non-Jew uh, be saved on Shabbos? All these different philosophical questions. But... That's all philosophical, because are there any real non-Jews in the world? I don't know. That's, that's one of the questions. I know the Torah has non-Jews in it, but I never met a non-Jew that I could talk to. Or I know a bunch of non-Jews, but I don't think there's Torah for them. So you have all these, it's tohu, chaos. I got a non-Jew who loves God, but his rabbi says he's an idolater. And we never heard of your mamas, so I only It's absolute chaos. To the point where you, you have a guy who learns the Chumash and Rashi, but he's afraid to look up Rashi's source. Because maybe that's too weird. When there's one, the, the, the real answer is, there's one Torah, it's pretty big, it's not endless, it's pretty big, and super easy to learn. Rashi quotes Sifri 36.4 Dvarim. Guess what you should do? Go look it up, it's okay. Look up the Sifri. Why would I do that? Did you ever think maybe the source is okay to look at and interesting? And you'll find out stuff over there? So, the, so in order to get gear off the ground, you have to be willing to be a little weird. But that's your ego, because really you're not weird. You guys met a guy today who had the guts to tell you he learned Sanhedrin. Was he weird? No. Mm -mm. Can anybody really call that guy weird? No. But he had like, you know, like, hey, don't tell anybody, I'm, I'm learning the Sanhedrin. It was like an incognito, this guy. Like in the back room of a pizza shop, where no one was looking. It's crazy. And the, the Hasidic guy with the Sifri, like, I, I, I learned Sifri, but in Rush. Rush. You know, it's like he would not answer the question. It's the kosher one. The kosher one. And so there's just kind of a, I think it's the Sitra Akhra. I think it's like a, the evil side of spirituality, giving tests to mankind. Because it's only you and your ego, that's the, you know, you and your ego, that is the problem. Nobody said don't learn Tanakh. Nobody said don't learn Yavamas. Nobody said don't learn Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin is beyond normal. But that guy, and I know this because the guy who took me to New York, he was telling me, you know, 
I'm, looking, I'm following your work, and I'm, going, and I'm thinking about, uh, you know, the, the, the Jews are called the Bnei Malachim, sons of kings, and it says in the Rambam, and I'm thinking, and I'm like, he says, is that okay? I said, Yosef, you're asking if a, if a language if the, of the Rambam is okay for you to think about. But they don't know. They don't know how free they are. So what they call the Masorah, or the tradition, is a very... Uh, narrow focus because it's like saying um, what you read in the New York Times is all there is in the world did you know there were other newspapers there's the Wisconsin Times, there's the Idaho Times Alaskan Times Singapore Times it's called open your mind, go look around and learn now, okay, we're not going to send people to Singapore and Malaysia, but in the base Midrash and you saw this yesterday. There's a certain curriculum of Torah books that every Jewish person slash institution on the planet holds by. It is indisputable, 100% kosher, interchangeable, and nobody will question you, even the Zohar. As radical as that was, it was a test. He said, do I learn the Zohar? Now that was a test, and that was Kishuf. That was a shtickle. Right? Because he wanted to say, if you say you're going to learn Zohar, then if you, and if you have a little bit of a flinch, which I didn't, if you flinch, you're weird. I didn't flinch. Yeah. Now, why didn't I flinch? Because if I'm from Brooklyn, it's a little weird. But if you're from Sfat, where the Zohar was written, the one guy we run into from Sfat, maybe then it's legitimate. And guess what, who, who he ran into? The one guy from Sfat. Who doesn't flinch? Who goes to Lagba Omer every year to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's grave? Who wrote the Zohar? My daughter's name is Zohari. My Zohar. Why? Because <laughs> she was born in a spot hospital. <laughs> so, the Kishu ran into a dead end. Poor him. So when I said without hesitation, yes, I do learn a Zohar. Oh, well, I learned a Sifri. He said, or I learned Rashi. Whatever. So, you see, it's a game. I, I, I called him out on his game just to show he's playing a game. And the game is with himself. And not everyone likes that game. I try not to play that game too often. It's a bit in trouble. But it proved the point. And when I was in, in uh, you mentioned Daf Yomi today with our friend. I, I took Daf Yomi in the yeshiva where he learned one page of Talmud a day. And... It came up, there was an Australian who the Australians had to get in a fight in the Shiva lot, they're just who they are, they're feisty guys. And it came out in the discussion. The, the, the guy who gave the class was a very good mentor of mine. When I first found Gerd Sedek non Jew in the language, Rabbi Silver Silver Alba Shalom, he was one who I confirmed it with. And it was such a dumb question for him, I asked him, is Gerd Sedek non Jew a thing? He says, Can you read? I said, Yeah, but I don't want them to say, No, can you read? Yeah. Okay then. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing to say. When you when you when you understand Gare on this level, where is Gare going? It's got to be the level that it's not a surprise. It's not controversial. It's not even a thing. It's as normal as you guys saw a guy teaching from Sanhedrin. That was not weird, in the slightest. But he felt weird. Why Why do you think it was ignored so long? That's the question. I don't know. The, the I mean, Rabbi the, Silver and Ashir said, the, the wait, wait, what, what that? So they, they, they were talking about Tanakh, yeah. and Ephraim says, Why don't we learn Tanakh today? Rabbi Silver says, Okay, go ahead, introduce it back to the Jewish people. No, no, no one says, Don't. No one says, You cannot learn Tanakh. But nobody says to do it. So, he, so Ephraim said, We need to learn Tanakh. Rabbi Silver said, Vakasha, go ahead, go ahead, reintroduce it. This is the problem. And there's no cause of the problem. Why do you, do you guys ever set your table for dinner? Do you put your fork on the left? Why? When you eat with the right. <laughs> Every time I go to someone's house, fork and the knife, first thing I do, I switch. Everyone's like, why does he do that? Because I'm right handed? How else do you want me to eat this thing? I'm right here is like, really hello. So syntax is a problem. All these little things are a problem. 
The Jewish mind, the Yiddish Akab, doesn't know of this. The Greek mind has entered Judaism and Torah circles. And there's a social stigma. Do you know how guilty I felt as a bucker learning Kabbalah in the base Midrash in Svat? And it was my own hang-up. And when you get old enough and mature enough, you realize nobody cares. Nobody cares. Learn it. But, I don't know, there's just a stigma called the Yitzhar Hara, whatever it is. And the problem, let's say once you're not learning Navi, the prophets, the prophets are so geared by definition. Look at Isaiah 56.3, Isaiah 14.1. Just to name a couple at the top of my head, I don't know that all the verses ball pet. But the underlying premise of the Navi is like the nations, the nations return, become gear. Sephania 3.9, we'll serve God with one uh, common language. Everyone cuts off the end of the verse, Shechem Echad. What does it mean, Shechem Echad? I bet, how many people on the planet know what it means, Shechem Echad? You know what it means? A name to you. Huh? A name to you. Shechem? Oh, Shechem. They'll say, I heard of the city Shechem. That's great. I have too. Yeah. Thank you. But that's not what it means here. So what does it mean? So this is where our friend Kishuv comes in. Oh, it just means together. Ooh. <laughs> right? Did you look it up? So I gave a talk last year in Waco. And we got to this. I don't know what Shechem Echad means. Most people don't want to say, I don't know what it means. So they make it up. Witchcraft. Just, oh, it just means together. Because generally, obviously from context, it means together. We one tongue for one nation, or one language. Safa blah, 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 Shechem Echad. What is Shechem Echad? So it means together, right? Just from context? So I looked it up. I looked it up. And I'm saying, and I, I, call, this, I told the people this in the crowd, at, at Vendel Jones' house, I needed Jones' house. I was sitting in Vendel Jones' chair, giving this on Arab Shabbos last year, this same time, this conference. And I said, guys, before I look at this, I guarantee you, this is going to be a gear verse. I just guarantee you. It's because we're stuck. It's one of those gear kind of things. I look it up. Open up the commentaries. You can be free to look on your spider yourselves. I forget the exact, exact connotation of language, but it said, the nations will serve, uh, like, uh, tzadachat or whatever, but gerim. And literally, he uses the word gerim. So the world will become ger and serve together God under, uh, like, you can call it return to Hebrew or whatever you understand, safabura, a clear language. It was a ger, it was a ger verse. Shechem Echad is like a synonym or whatever of a cognate, uh, relative meaning to ger. No one looks that up. They say Safa Bura, the common language, and that's a great verse, it's a messianic verse, but the, the Iker part, no one looks up. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it Asr? Is it forbidden? No. But how many people are willing to go look up a random word they feel guilty? I'm a rabbi. Aren't I supposed to know all the words? Especially when people are counting on me. And Shechem sounds like where Yosef is from. So for sure I know it, but I don't want to. I don't want to let you know that I don't know it. So I'll do some uh, kishu if you won't know. If I just say it means we'll serve together, you will never question me. Remember the dot dot dot. You'll never question me ever. And if you do, I'll just witchcraft you. What does it say? What does it mean? Shechem Oh, it means uh, it means together. Well, how do you know? Because I said so. And, okay. I mean, what, I, mean, you, I mean, if I say that, imagine if I get rough and tough, right? Because I said so. Are you really going to start a fight on camera? Well, prove it, Rabbi Katz. All right, so now, okay, my, then, so now, for the sake of the camera, I would say, well, my Rabbi told me, okay, eventually you're going to give up, you're going to quit, and you're not going to look it up, and I know that. So as long as you want to persist, I'll keep going, but you will quit. I mean, we're all going to quit. No one's going to push you like, show me right now, Rabbi Katz. No one's doing that. And then I win. Because you forgot 
I came out the victor. We never looked it up. And I will give a share tomorrow. And I don't care about you. That's how it goes. And it's just social life. I mean, you know? I, I know this is thin ice, but is that true with Rashi? What's that? But for instance, because he said so. Yes and no. A lot of people have a problem with Rashi. What I was telling Nathaniel was, Rashi never wrote anything. Nothing. Just reinterpreted. Copy, no, yeah. copy and paste. Copy and paste. Everything. Nearly. And if it wasn't literal, he would take like two uh, positions and like you said, reinterpret, but really make it what I call vulgar. One of my words is vulgar, which is not crass. Just like you, I see you're wearing a wristwatch. Well, no. <laughs> but we could, or, okay, but we call that a watch. You see what I'm saying? A wristwatch. I call it, we can call it a watch. One is uh, a lesser term. Yeah. Automobile, car. So Rashi will take two positions, and he can, he's a master of language, so he'll make it one thing. But he didn't, he didn't invent a new view, or commentary, or position. He copied and pasted from the Tanaic works. 100%. Not 99, 100. The challenge is to find it, because what you said, did he source it? Usually, no. Sometimes, yes. But you know where he's getting it from. And as we saw, they, it's okay if you don't in Rashi, but God forbid we look it up. I'm saying these little stigmas, that's where Gare's at. That's how I want to I'll answer the question. That's how Gare, where Gare's at. So you can understand why I get upset. We can understand why you get upset. We can understand why we might attack Rabbi Katz. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Katz said that Rashi didn't write anything. Look how easy it is to take that out of context. I would say then Rabbi Katz doesn't believe in Rashi. He doesn't believe in the sages either, we could say. No, Rabbi Katz never said that. Rabbi Katz asked a Hasidic guy, did you ever learn Sifri? It's a, it's a different jab I'm throwing. It sounds like I'm questioning Chazal. No, I'm questioning you, Rabbi. Right? Did you look up Rashi's source? And you see, when you call them on it, it's, it was a kosher question, was it not? I mean, it wasn't like, a, I know more than you. It was a simple question. Did you look, ever read Britain Sifri? I had my, one of my mentors said, as I was telling you also, you know, did you ever learn Tysus? That's like a very yeshiva thing to say. The toast was commentary to the Talmud. Did you learn Tysus? It's a joke, halfway joke, but it's halfway serious. Because the guy that says that knows 90% of Bakram don't learn Tosfas. And the Rebbe knows they should all be learning Tosfas. So I'm a shtickle Rebbe, a meaning I'm a teacher in a Yeshiva Shem and Aver. And I'm asking a guy, learn Sifri? Learn Tosfas? You learn the Rambam? You learn the, 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 the Briskarav? Why? Because the answer is no, 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 no. And my mentor, what did he say? Taisvis is Ruchnis. Spirituality is Taisvis. So the Misnagid, the anti-spiritualist, will say, that's preposterous. Taisvis is not spiritual. Has nothing to do with Kabbalah. Well, it does. It does. If you learn it the right way. Look for the wisdom in it. So, my point is, we have a weird stigma and a weird limitation and it has nothing to do with gear. I don't even know what it has to do with. It has to do with Ephraim in my, my, my class with Rabbi Silver on why we don't learn Tanakh. I don't know. Judaism has people fighting fights on every front. Should we keep one day Rosh Hashanah or two? Can we blow shofar on Rosh Hashanah shops? Can I eat kidneys on Pesach? If I marry my Moroccan wife, can I eat kidneys in her house? The answer is no, because they don't kidneys either. They, eat, they don't eat hummus. But... Everyone's got these little things they want. They want to do things that, go, that goes against halacha or against the tradition or is out of the Masorah. They'll say, Rabbi Katz has, is out of the Masorah on Ger because Ger is convert. I challenge you. Find me one source that says Ger is convert, like exclusively, or where I'm like out of this thing. It doesn't exist. There's no discussion contrary to gear. It's all what he said, she said, I thought I didn't I thought I wasn't allowed to learn Sanhedrin in the Yeshiva. That's your problem. 
So we're dealing with issues that are non-issues. And then, as my good friend Amnon says, in Yiddishkeit, the smaller the Indian, the greater the fuss. And we're dealing with the smallest Indian possible. Can a non-Jew believe in God? You realize that? That's the question. Can my non-Jewish friend believe in God? Now! Now! Okay, so that, if that's what you think. Now, for me to prove that point, I've had to travel the globe, write two books, and teach a large amount of Torah to prove, like, for example, this book, which we'll do soon, Lekutai Yisichus, or Lubav Cherebi, that he believes that non-Jews believe in God, but only if we call it Noah. If we call it in the original, somehow it loses authenticity and it's not in the tradition so when the Rebbe learned Noahide Torah and if I tell you it was Gera let's, let's pretend I'm right for one second right? or even pretend I'm not right if the Rebbe believes in Noahide I'll even ask you for, forget me for a second where did he get it from? Where did the, this is the same Rashi Sifri right? where did the Rebbe have the guts to say that a non-Jew can believe in God. Where did he get it from? Taste this. Okay. <laughs> but the fact, you know, did the Rebbe believe in the Torah? Yeah. Yes. Did he learn the Masorah? Yeah. Could it be that the Rebbe learned the Ritva? Could it be? The answer is yes, and we'll see. So here's the problem. Guess what the Ritva said? Gary. Called Gear. So the Rebbe wrote B'nai Noach. So because Rebbe wrote B'nai Noach, then there is no Gear. But what if the Rebbe did learn the Ritva, which we know, so the Rebbe learned it in Gear and wrote it in B'nai Noach. This is where we're at. Do we go with what we call it or what it is? Rashi called it, hey everybody, my name is Rashi. And I wrote some great stuff, and hey, I don't know what this word means. Rashi. That's now called a Rashi. Was it Rashi? No. He quoted the Sifri. So somehow in our stigma, if we go to the Sifri, on the Pusik, the verse, in the Torah, I quote the Sifri, I guarantee you, everyone saying, Rabbi Katz is wrong, throw him out of here. We don't go by the Sifri. We go by Rashi. You always have the same argument? They would crusade that I quoted the Sifri. We don't poskin like the Sifri. We don't learn like the Sifri. It's like, you know, how many of you have ever had, um, uh, what is it, um, man, uh, a Thousand Island sauce? Ever had a Thousand Island? Mm -hmm. Oh, so ketchup and mayonnaise? <laughs> ketchup and mayonnaise, right? right. But, but God forbid someone asks you to taste ketchup and mayonnaise. No. You know, it's it's the same thing. <laughs> it's kind of a grass kind of way of putting it, but right? So if Rashi says the Sifri, it's okay. But if we go to the original, somehow it's wrong. We can learn the seven laws, but God forbid from the, the tracting Sanhedrin. Because the Shivas don't learn Sanhedrin. But if we, learn, if we read a book in English by a modern-day publisher, somehow it's okay. That's really, I, mean, I kind of like where this talk is going, that's a nice way of putting this clippa on what it is. And you see, it's a social clippa. Nothing to do with what my rabbi said. No rabbi said to learn the Sifri. It doesn't exist. But no rabbi said to learn the Sifri. Therefore, what's the complaint of Gerrit? No rabbis are saying to learn gear. They're not going to. But nothing to do with gear. They're not going to tell you to learn Sanhedrin, where the gear sources are, no high sources are. They're not going to tell you to learn Tanakh, where all the, the prophetic gear are. They want you to learn a book in vulgar English produced today. It's just the weirdness of mankind. What's the question of authority as far as what's a lack of and what's not? What's that? What's halakhic and what's not as far as... Well, so that's what I'm saying. There's a, there, there, you know, I, 
we come from a rabbinic system. Like I was saying, I mean, Mauricio's shul, there's the, the standard bookshelf. I like the base manager, so it was a standard shul. Every classic word. And you saw me ripping books off, because they had to be there. I said, where's your grease on the Rambam? How did I know they'd have grease on the Rambam? Because I saw over there, they had the brisker rav. So I said to myself, if they have the brisker rav, then for sure they're going to have the grease on the Rambam. And so they make the, the, all the books have the same shape and size. So they're universal, like USB port, right? If there was a USB uh, plug in this room and I needed a USB, I could probably find it, right? So I knew that there was going to be a grease in the Rambam. And lo and behold, how, how long did we find that grease in the Rambam? Like 10 seconds. Yeah. Pulled it off, boom. That's, that's the system. I got an electrician, a carpenter. They know their, 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 their craft, right? If this light bulb blew out, there, there's, a, there's a way to, to change the light bulb, right? This is a, a normal way. And if he said, oh, mm, gee, we're out of light bulbs. But I know I, I can figure out what to do. You trust them. It's not too weird. So Rabinix is a craft. And it's very, you don't go out of the craft, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. It's like, you know, imagine if in a football game, one of your players got hurt, you wouldn't pick a guy from the crowd. Hey, buddy, you look like a big guy. Come in here. You should play football. That's, on TV, they do that. Right? There's a system, a tight system. And in that system, there are books that work. But there's also true revelation in the system. And that's another problem. And we talked about it. You want to know what, the, what a mind-blowing thing is? This guy... Don't tell anybody I told you this. This is a <laughs> private secret. You better turn that off. <laughs> this is a secret. But the Lubavitcher Rebbe was a rabbi. Don't tell anybody. Shh. He, was a, he was a rabbi. Did you know that Rabbi Meir Kahana, don't tell anybody also, he was a rabbi too. See, you see my point? Yeah. So there's like the, the standard system, and then there's novelli in the system. Did you know that the Rambam has depth in his book? I didn't know that. I thought the Rambam was simple and dumb. Did you know that the Brit and then this, this did you know can, can go on. What we're saying is, did you know there's divine inspiration in the Torah, Ruach HaKodesh, did you know there's shot remnants, Jerusha and Sod, i.e. levels and dimensions? Did you know rabbis had a lot of things going on, blah, 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 blah? That's the next level of where Gare's at. Gare is buried not in what you would call halacha. Rabbi, can I put my right shoe on first? That's halacha for most people. And, you know, I've heard people call their posse, right? My, uh, listen, I got my, my, my thumb is sprained. Can I put my left shoe on first? Yeah, put your left shoe on first. But don't tell anybody. Right? Most people are calling the rabbi for that kind of thing, right? Yeah. You know, rabbi, listen, you know, the shloishim of the nifter was 20, 30 days. Well, the 29th day, and in four hours from now, it's going to be over. We're having a party. Can I have a piece of cake? Yeah, 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 don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. That's where most people are asking those questions. The gear question is like, can another Jew keep Shabbos like Christus 9a, but according to Tosos of Shabbat? Like, huh? What? Right, so, the gear Torah, i.e. the non-Jew looking to serve God, blah, 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 it comes in a deeper extension of Torah. It comes in the Sanhedrin. It comes... In Yavamas. It comes in the weird book, the really weird one, called Evan HaEzer of the Shulchan Aruch. The one portion no one learns. Why? Because no one deals with those stuff. There's four parts to the Shulchan Aruch. Orachayim, what time is Shema? What time do I daven? How do I put on tefillin? Choshen uh, Mishpat, you stole five bucks from me. What do we do? Yoradeya, how do I cost your meat? Evan Ezer, can my convert friend touch my wine? 
No one goes there. So, the, the to Sorry, yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. hundred percent, the internet. I just, I'm sorry. No, no okay. tape, but, um, so my thing has always been, obviously, has yeah. created everything right. that's alive. Yeah. I understand that there's a task and a responsibility yeah. and a specific purpose and calling to the Jewish people, which I think is awesome and great. I feel like what, what you're saying in terms of, you know, uh, when all these questions are asked, you know, can, Hayusik, can my non-Jewish friend or, you know, can my convert touch my wine or whatever the case may be, what, I, I get that things need to be separated out, you know, but obviously Hashem created everybody else too. Right, so right. what, you can't have a situation where you're saying that this creation of Hashem, whether it's, you know, Gentiles or yeah. right. it's a ant. <laughs> you can't, you know, you, you can't say there's no purpose. There's right. no way to serve him. So yeah. I, my question is, can you talk a little bit about um, where, what, what does it say? How, what is God's intentions upon all of other, the other creation of humans that, you know, he made and, and how he entrusts upon us to serve so, him. Yeah. So can I tell you in a creative way? Yes. There's these evil people in the world called conservative Jews. <laughs> and they know what you're saying. They agree. Mm -hmm. But because they're conservative, they're evil Jews. I so it. we don't listen to them. <laughs> There's an even worse group called reformed Jews. Oh. And they actually believe that you have souls Sometimes and you're human. <laughs> but we don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Then there's what we call the modern Orthodox Jew. So he believes what you believe. He won't tell anybody this for whatever reason. So my point is, the Jewish people are not one yet. God, God forbid they're not, right? But Achtus is not what we do yet. So for the secular Jew, and in Israel is really you know, common. They have these videos on YouTube, like a, a videographer goes to the street. Okay. That's all right. Yeah? Okay. And like, hi, do you believe non-Jews have souls? So they'll ask like a, an Israeli, like, no, duh, yeah. Like every Israeli is like, duh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask the one black and white guy, like, Mapitom, no. Mm -hmm. No. Like, you don't think they have souls, sir? No. Say for Tanya says that the Akam, like, okay, shalom. Yeah. So the seculars know what everything we're trying to do is like, duh. But their problem is they can't figure out why they shouldn't eat pork. So then the Orthodox say, you should know better why we don't eat pork. But how they came to the conclusion of why they don't eat pork comes with the gestalt of non-Jews, blah, 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 blah. So every portion of Jews are missing a key component of your world philosophy that you want to happen. Which right? if they all came together, if we ever ah, came together... Ah, so that's what I'm saying. Have a portion. If they would learn the weird Sanhedrin, and the weird Sifri, and the weird Merkahan, Khan, and the weird Gavavach Rebbe, and say, guess what, boys and girls, it's all one Torah, one Jewish people, one Am Yisrael, and you get all those sparks and nuggets, and you make a nice little cholent, guess what the outcome is? Light to nations, be a light to nations, bring everyone close to the Torah like this. So Aaron... Love the creation, like love peace, pursue peace, bring the creation under the wings of the Torah. It's such an easy message. It is the only message. If you learn just like you know, without bias and things, the only conclusion is your conclusion. One creation, one it's it's so obvious. But once you splinter and, and fragment, so the reformed Jews know the message, but they're fighting, we should eat pork, we should eat pork. So then their message of, we also believe in mankind, you know, that's true. It just gets off. Exactly. Yeah. And the Orthodox Jews should know better, and they would know better, but they're too busy learning. Let's take Bava Kama 38, and we'll stop. Bava Kama 38a, which is one of the sources of non-Jews and Torah. Right? One of the biggest. But what is the context of the page? You're going to listen to your minds. What would you say... Just for just guess, right? Baba Kama 38a, it's the tractate of damages. It is one of the super sources of non Jews and their mitzvahs and B'nai Noach. What's the discussion? You would think it's like uh, saving the world, right? Mm -hmm. 
if my ox gourd and Occam's ox and it's out of the, the domain of the owner, would I have to pay you for your ox or do we split it? Rashi says there we split the ox. Ah, but if it was a muad, a sure muad, that is full damages because he's a known gorer, but it was an Occam. He took the gox of the non Jew. Ah, so do we actually have laws for the non Jew? Then they go, oh, by the way, the non Jews have mitzvahs and stuff. Yay! But if it was a goy in his ox, no one bad in an eye. No one bad in an eye. Except for the one guy who's like, oh man, look at that, the source of the non Jew right there in the middle of Baba If you can wrap your head around that, you got gear. And of course, that'll be transcribed so we're taking out of context. Rabbi Katz said, if you can get Baba Kama, the ox of the Goy ox, oh, he calls that getting gear. So that's a quote. Go ahead. Yeah. That's, you, see, you see the issues? It's really simple. The issues are simple. The truth is simple. The dynamic is simple. It's just like, I don't know. It, it's, it's one thing. It's one thing. So when people get that one thing, it's like, oh, so you're saying that a Jew can learn Torah and learn to go with God? Yeah. Why did you just say so? Uh, you're, you're bent on asking me every wrong question in the book. Who my rabbi was, where did I learn, how do I know, who told me, who did I check it with, why am I out of the Masora, why am I going into halacha? why do I put my left shoe on first, right? All these different things. It's a type of, not key shoe per se, but misdirection. So uh, the sicha, right? Um, so next one is Shabbos, uh, oh. which you kind of addressed a little bit, and yeah. then the sicha, and then the yeshiva. But before you go on, I just wanted to know, um, so I have to go get some kind of snacky something for yeah. my kids, and yeah. I could go to uh, the kosher Dunkin' Donuts. Does anybody want? I mean, they have muffins and obviously donuts and coffee and. I'm just. I'm going to be going out with you, my brother, so I want to stay. Okay. Um, so you don't need anything. I'm okay. Okay. Does anybody else need anything? If you want to pick them up for, for if you want to pick some up, and I'll pay for them for later on. You don't need stay to, to my brother's them. house. You don't need I'd to pay for that. anything. But I, I would pick that. What do you want? And, it, and it's all the same. Talking donuts, it's all the same. So you just want donuts? Yeah. You want the big donuts or the little munchkins? Big ones. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Do you want anything? So one of the stories that, like that really... Yeah. Okay. Coffee or anything? Not uh, unless it's decaf. <laughs> Do you want me to get a decaf coffee for you? Uh, small. I can go for a cup of coffee also. Okay. Tall, um, caffeine. Uh, heavy milk, heavy sugar. Okay. Tall, heavy, heavy. Okay. <laughs> Do you want anything? Okay. So th this this really gets not enough airtime by me, and I just never think of it, right? And I, I actually know the answer to all these questions now that I think about it is Shabbos. Kaim tells me that every time, right? The non Jew just wants Shabbos. You want to boil it down. Um, it is, really, you know, it's funny. You know, I make up all these stories about you know, complaints and fights, and they are real. They're real, but really what they're arguing about, you know, you can always boil it down to one thing, right? But one of the, the real thing is David Katz strong because he's giving the non-Jew Shabbos. Like that may be 1A of the fights. Because Shabbos is the most consequential. I mean, we get we, we, we talk about a lot of different things. You're confusing them with no eye versus care. You're confusing uh, that the non-Jews don't have a soul. All these different things. But where I think they don't know the Iker fight, and if I use a little bit of Shmakelka, I can figure out the fight, and that is you, David Katz, are wrong, because you're giving them shots. I think it's safe to say that's warning. I forget that 90% of the time. I should start realizing that. Why? Because my smicha is in Hilcha Shabbos. So, to go down memory lane, you start, you, know, you asked me a couple times already, and everything. Uh, everyone asks, you know, how did you get into this, or why, and passionate why, and, and, and I don't always remember. You see, there's so many things, who can remember it all? You just find yourself here in Baltimore doing these things, and you don't remember. But as a, as a guy in yeshiva, if I'm going to think back, learning Hilcha Shabbos, one of the laws that always stuck out from a complexity issue, if it's Shabbos, can a goy 
break Shabbos for me. That's one of the Can biggest. Goy do what? I'm sorry. Huh? Amir and You know what Amir and is? Yeah. That's one of my favorite sukhias in the laws of Shabbos, just because it's flat out interesting. That's, that's the warn the goy. We warn the goy. No, no, no. Amir and getting the goy to break Shabbos for me. Okay. And the reason why I latched onto it, Shabbos laws are great because when you get a clear law in mind, it's clear. You know, when you say, what is Borer? Separated. And you learn, it's like, ah, God, it's clear. As on Shabbos, you can't afford not to be clear. You need to know exactly what is the deal or you're breaking Shabbos. That's not exactly what you want to do. So they make you know Hilcha Shabbos. That's why I didn't want to, I, I wanted to speak, I knew, you know, you want to know the Torah. So, in the in Amira Lagoy, I never got a, I ne back then, I never got a real answer. Can we tell a goy to break Shabbos for us? And I just remember never getting a real answer. So, like was the Shabbos goy? Kind of. I mean, it is, but halakhically, it's not. Shabbos goy took on a uh, light switch, maybe? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in the 30s in Brooklyn, that was yeah. my father. Yeah, he was, right. He was, so it's, uh, it's, 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 it's an abused, <laughs> it's an abused concept, right? I, I understand that. Right, I'm, I'm but in halacha, that's not the concept. Okay. So when you get smicha, you don't learn how to use a shabbos coin. You're supposed to learn what is shabbos coin. Yeah. Right. So, but it has nothing to do with shabbos coin. It is. Um, I'm going to make a really fake example. Okay. If I am going to read the Sefer Torah and we need to light a match or a lighter, making it up. It makes no sense, right? We need, a, we need to light it. We need, we need a light, a candle. Oh, look at that. The candle blew out. Nathaniel, would you please light the light so we can read from the Torah? So, can Nathaniel um, break Shabbos for me on a derisa, on a derabunin? On Muksa, on Minhak, at what point can I break Shabbos through my non Jewish companion? And you're really not supposed to break Shabbos at all. You're supposed to know the law not to do it. People got to the point where they don't they, they forgot the law on purpose. So like, wow, it's kinda of it's kinda of hot in here. Could you please you know <laughs> no, no. so um I was not, not really, it's just a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it ends up being the halacha is like maximum moksa. And I always forget, like I said, it's complicated. Because there's different rabbis have different views. And, and, and there's a. To the point where some say yes, you can have a Shabbos going, some say no. Yeah. So it's a contradiction. That's why no one can jump out of the box. It is a contradiction. So the only way to solve the contradiction is to become a real Shabbos rabbi. Otherwise, you will never wrap your head around that. It's an open contradiction. So it's, it's two opinions. Kishuf. This is how you have the rabbi's own Shabbos in the halacha. So you cannot just become a rabbi. Why? See, I said I was like, I'm against the rabbis. I'm making a dodgy thing. But listen to what I'm telling very carefully. Why am I not allowed to know Shabbos laws and I am subordinate to the rabbis? That sounds like a very dodgy thing, and I know that. But why? Because there's a contradiction in the Shabbos play, right? Okay. How do you break that contradiction? You learn Shabbos laws in Rashi. And you didn't look up the Sifri. If you'd look up the Sifri, so to speak, you wouldn't get out of the contradiction. You wouldn't be in a box. It's called, did you ever think about looking up the Shulchan Aruch? When they give you, make you a rabbi, guess what it is? It's vulgar. Rabbis are vulgar. The certificate is from a vulgar scholarship. You can become a rabbi, and back me up because I know you know the answer, 
from learning Mishnabura. I love Mishnabura. Beautiful language, clear, nice print. And the Chavitz Chaim is a nice guy. But you will know nothing about being a rabbi. And you can 100% get smicha from simply knowing Shabbos in the Mishnah Bura. No question. But you will know nothing. Because if you look up the sources of the Mishnah Bura, where he got it from, I'll give you a real life example. Why do we fast on Tisha You know what? Um, probably based on uh, Zechariah 8. That's what you're told to say. I mean, because it mentions that... That's what you're told to say. That's the only place where it's not. That's vulgar. It's what you're told to say. I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you. So now, let's bump it up a level. Okay? Yeah. If you're really keen... And you look it up, because that's probably in the Mishnah Bura, correct? Yes. Or Achaim, yes. Laws of Fasting. Yes. And you'll, you'll find somewhere there about Zechariah. Okay. Did you look in the, the commentaries of the Mishnah Bura on the page? No. Guess what the Chavitz Chaim says? post scheme. Huh, correct. The post scheme said. Now it's already like, wow, what does that mean? Which post scheme? What's a post say? What is the Chavetz Chaim calling a posek? I don't know. Do you know? No. No. How many guys on the planet Earth would know that? This is where I speak fantastically. It's a ridiculous claim. I'm going to stand here, sit here right now and say, how many men on Earth living right now know what the Chavetz Chaim means when he says the poskim? And you can look it up. Go look it up. I'm very slow on it. I would, I'd be impressed if it gets off of these two hands. So I looked it up. Want to know who the post the post scheme are? It's only one. The Ramban. Ramban. The Ramban was the Rishon who poskined. Because we're already fasting, we might as well keep fasting. There's no reason to. We're already doing it. And he brings the support of Zechariah. So if you're here of the Tor, Tor said, that's a good idea. You ever hear the Shulchan Aruch? He said, that's a good idea. <laughs> you ever hear the Mishnah Burra? I guess it was a good idea. The said so. The Postkin became the Shulchan Aruch, the Tor, and the Ramban. Now other Rishonim talked about it. But they weren't the, the cause of the halakha. What I just said is forbidden legumery. Why? How dare you look it up? Who are you to look that up? And that's your own stick saying that. No one said don't look it up. No one's going to call you not kosher for looking it up. Mm -hmm. But do you feel the stigma in your heart? It burns people. How could you look that up? But it, it's totally like drama and fake. Like it's weird, isn't it? But it's like you're questioning the Chofetz Chaim. Yeah, it's like, weird. It's so to get out of the contradiction, our mots of our condition, you got to go to the source. Chaim Clorfi, my dear friend, has been, you know, complaining about this. Why? 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 And, he, and he he thinks he knows the answer. We talked about it, right? It's Zachariah. Like he said, Zachariah. That, I said, Chaim, you're gonna you're gonna kick yourself when I tell you this. And he's like, okay, tell me. It's the Ramban. And, and you know, I looked up in the Ramban. So it's it's this is again, you see where I'm going with this? It's weird. So being a rabbi is illegal. Because the smicha programs are Mishnah Bura. Vulgar. Just know the halacha. Let's go. You can say it. Come on. Poski. Let's hear you. Yeah, buzz. That's all they want. So the question is, hey, who said we don't fast? Are we going to be fast? Poski. I will get an A plus on that test. 100%. In fact, I would be an advanced student. Because usually they would give, like you said, 
Zacharias said because that's called Svar. And you would pass a test. And I know that because that's how I passed my test. And the rabbi of Zalman Chemia Glober, who passed my test, said, Your test is garbage. Because you didn't show me where it was written. You gave me your logical answer, which everybody does. So let's say you didn't throw me a bone. Let's call it post game. I would be an advanced student. Nobody's telling you, Rabba. Zalman Chemia Glober told me, Find where it's written. That's how I got trained. He told me, David Katz, go out and be a rabbi. Then you, you go out and become a rabbi, guess what you find out? It's forbidden to become a rabbi. No one's used to talking to a rabbi. So I'm the one Meshuggah who took his words to heart and became a rabbi. But you find out there's very few rabbis. So most rabbis have a name. Or a base date or something. And I'm just a guy who became a rabbi. One day when I'm older with a white beard, yourself, okay, it might change. But it's weird. It's weird. Most people just accept known rabbis, even if they're weird. Um, maybe if I would have stayed in the regular yeshiva world, um, trying to bring proofs of why we put our right shoe on first, I probably would have a lot less controversy as a rabbi. But I'm bringing out like, the weirdest Torah of all time as a rabbi. So it's super weird. But it's the same thing. So in Shabbos, I wanted to know why, what is the deal with, Sh with Shabbos school? Like what? Just, I, don't, I didn't know no non Jews in terms of my life. And then, like, what is it? Like, on one hand, I don't get to the rice, it's an abundant, just, ah, what is it? It took many years to find the answer to that. So, the non Jew in Halacha, you'll never tell me it doesn't exist. In, in Shulchan Aruch on Shabbos, the non Jew is a player. How so? He's a Shabbos koi. He's a player. He ain't going anywhere else. So if you ever look, if you ever hear a shear on a Voda Zora 64B, this is how I actually you can actually find on the internet, this guy's a common shear. Yeah? The guy sounds like this, right? I showed people for context. Look it up to a, a shear. Look, look for a Daf Yomi shear, a Voda Zora 64B. It'll go something like this. Aza who gave Taishiv, we have a gate Taishiv, but the Khazal say is a gay Taishiv today. What's an after mean it? And we have a gay Taishiv, and he's drowning in a river on Shabbos, and a mitzvah for the safe, like a heel. But if he's not a gay Taishiv, he's starting up, let him die. So the time is says, if he's a gay Taishiv, we save him from the river. But if he's not a gay Taishiv, we let him die in the river like a nothing. Some say there is a gay Taishiv today, be a fee, Zman Goyim Noyik. In that case, Dr. Mina is, we say the Yertoshia from a river. But if there's Marsh, you know, you know, you know, you know, he's a Nakri, push him a guy, let him drown. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying, if he's a kosher non Jew, yeah. you we ask? save him on Shabbos. If he's not a kosher non Jew, we let him drown on Shabbos. Now, that is a very weak answer. And most people say, ha, huh? he says, my friends, it's Daf Yomi. He learned it for 20 minutes on the subway before he came to Shear. Okay, he's not studying at all. Okay, I can put together Daf Yomi right now and be very satisfied. It doesn't make it the answer. Because if you say that's what a gear toe shove is, it comes down to that? Oh, uh, give me a break. I mean, seriously. <laughs> so... Do we save the lives of non-Jews on Shabbos? That's what the question is in Hilchah Shabbos. So the non-Jew is integral, woven in the fabric of Hilchah Shabbos. So for all those years, I learned about the non-Jew. And he is 100% part of my life. So then when the question is asked, can we keep Shabbos? I'm saying, hey, that's a brilliant question. Now to any other Jew, who doesn't have smicha in Hilchah Shabbos. Is that a good question? No, it's a stupid question. Can you put your left shoe on first? I would say no. Let's say the expert in the matters, I'm making this up, if you put your right shoe but on your left foot, you can do it. Then Kumar would say, do we know that? Haven't you heard of Ravashi? He twisted his ankle once. 
and he had to put his right shoe on his left foot, and he asked the Shila, can we do that? So they said yes. Then they said, what about the left shoe on the right foot? Yes, but Betty Effin, you shouldn't do it. So the guy who knows the laws of shoes, he'd say, that's a great question. The guy who knows yeshivish Torah was a stupid question. I had a guy in yeshiva who said, it could be an avera. My friend, I'm sure you've done a lot of things in your life, but that is not one of them. Okay? So then when I, whenever I, you know, I'm a, I'm a kama, so I do the birka kawanin. I take my shoes off for the, for the, for the prayer. And every time, so I'm, 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 you know, in shul, I'm taking my shoes off all the time. So I would say, do I put my, should I be, be a dafka, put my left shoe on first? You know what my answer all the time is? Why would you want to? Just put your right shoe on first. Like, I mean, really, like, is it really, what are you, what, okay, even by being subordinate to the system, what are you proving, left shoe? Just put the right, shut up, put the right shoe on, for, seriously. So sometimes it's just, just do it. Just, is there really, a, do you have a better reason to put your left shoe on first, really? Just put your right shoe on first. It's got to be the right and the left. Unless you're in the Obama administration, then it's different. So, I'm saying, wow, a non-Jew keeping Shabbos is a great question. Because I'm trained to think it's a good question. I am a wannabe rabbi if I don't think it's a good question. It has to be a good question. It has to be. It can't not be. <laughs> so, so then the follow-up question would be, and, and what do you mean keeping Shabbos? And, I, and I, the reason That's I say... That's the question. So it, if a goy keeps Shabbos, he's high of Misa. Right, and there are those out there who would say... Wait a that, second. Uh, a goy that keeps Shabbos is high of Misa. Everyone's heard it. But guess what? When you get your smicha and Shabbos, they don't teach you that. Why? Because it has nothing to do with the laws of Shabbos. It has to do with the laws of war. The laws of what? War. Oh, okay. Hilchus, uh, like, so I'm saying, wow. In the back of my brain, I'm thinking, I'm a Shabbos rabbi. I know non-Jews in law. How can they tell us that law? And everyone knows the law. Because not everything with the components of Goyen Shabbos coming to Hilchus Shabbos. So you start to think, okay, so do we do witchcraft or pretend we don't know? Right? I say, look it up. The witchcraft answer is no. But then, why am I saying no? My Shabbos training says, I don't know. The Rambam says, I know. So I know the Rambam says he knows. But my rabbis in Hilcha Shabbos world land, they said they don't know. But I never learned it. So I can say what I heard. Or I can admit, you know what? I never heard it in my Shabbos world. So as an inquisitive mind wants to know, why don't I know that if I think I have smicha in Shabbos? Because it's not the same thing. Just like convert and gear are not the same thing. Just like I'm not a counter-missionary rabbi, and people think it's all the same thing. It's not the same thing. Nothing's the same thing. So, we look it up. And... It is written in the Rambam. Rock but I don't remember how I found the answer. I mean, I looked, da 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 da. Ten commandments, the gear in your gate, keep Shabbos. But it's a gear ascetic. That's the problem. It's the problem. It's the, the convert. So I, 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 I thought somehow Rashi land person world thing, the gear ascetic thing person, it. Can't be Jewish because a convert's a Jew. And that was my answer. And obviously, that's not a good enough answer, is it? Rashi, convert, world, land, thing, in person, human, isn't it? So I'm reading Yavamas 48B because I broke the law. I read the weird book because the, the, the Torah Tamima, which is a book that takes the verses of the Torah and it sources where it's spoken about in the Talmud. So if you look at Torah Tamima in the Ten Commandments, it will send you to Yavamas 48b. And I broke the rules, and I became a super rabbi, which is standard rabbi. 
I went out of the box and I said, I'm going to learn how to resolve the contradiction. And boy, did I pay that price. You learn, you have a B, and it's right, it's a Garrett Sedic. I, right there, like my whole essence is cracked. It's a conflict. Game over. I lost. Like it came, just like, wow, it came down to that. Then I, then I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I put, I put on Nathaniel Kishuf. David Katz, you're lying to yourself. You're learning it, dot, 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 like they want you to learn it, dot, dot, dot. You're, you, they're telling you they, the social stigma pressure thing, is saying, hey, come on, Katz, dot, 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 man. You know Garrett said it's a convert. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Then I snapped out, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was lying to myself, it's not what it says. Went through it again. I said, man, there's got to be a Garrett Sinek non-Jew. So that night, I told you, I called Rabbi Silver, and he says, duh. So he's a real rabbi. He is a, he was, he's dead now. He's, and so he was like a mentor to me. But you can't tell that on Facebook, like my mentor who's dead now. Like, but for him, it was obvious and so I reached that level with him in that, in that particular topic where it's like you broke out of that, that, that social stigma. There is a Garrett Sedek non-Jew. So I was telling people, and the whole, this whole argument on, on the blog was over that issue. That was when I found it. So imagine how converts are like, no way. So Rashi there is saying Garrett Sedek, right? And where did Rashi get it from? Sifri. Look at the Sifri. There it is. But, um. So in, in Sifri, how does it define that? It just says Garrett Sedek on the verse. So then, it's now. Not, it's implying. Um, in the Ten Commandments. But it's a non Jewish Garrett Sedek. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So now, when you break out, the danger of breaking out of the box, why they don't want you going to the Sifri. Because you're not going to get it right unless you're serious to get it right. So at the end of the day, listen to how deep this is. Remember we talked about the Rambam? Mm -hmm. A non-Jew that keeps Shabbos is high of Misa. Which non-Jew? A goy. But if he's Gerd Sedek, he can. Hilchus Malachim? Yeah? Rambam has a, a language he's using. I call it Ger Code. Guess where that gear code came from? Verbatim, you can look it up. Shulchan or Chaim 304. Sifri. Huh? Sifri? No, this is in terms of halacha. Shulchan 304, how to rest your slave on Shabbos. Oh. In Evid, who's, who's circumcised but not dunked in a mikvah. Guess what the Bior Hagra, El, El Gona Vilna calls him? Gear Sedek. I.e., what do you call it, Evan Kanani? Circumcised but not dunked in the mikvah. You brought him back from Syria. He took on the female mitzvahs. Guess what we call him? A Ger Sedek non Jew. So, guess who that was in the Ten Commandments? By Rashi's Lafib Shuto that he got from the Gemara in Yavamus 48b. Ger Sedek non Jew. Oh. And it's the same language. How to rest your slave. Where did the Sugya come from in the Talmud? Creases 9a. A Ger Toshav who keeps Shabbos like a non Jew. And, we, and you can say it's your slave or it's your Idaho good friend. And all the time, as Merkel Han said, it's either your slave, Eretz Yisrael, Ger Toshav, or outside the land. And we'll close with that by saying it looks impossible. But when you start to connect the dots, Rambam was talking, Shulchan Arach was talking, Yavamas was talking, Ten Commandments was talking, Ger Tzedek was talking, Rashi, it's all one Torah. And so perfect and divine, it can't go wrong. <laughs> and it breaks, and you resolve every contradiction. And then you realize there never was a contradiction. It's just that when you got your vulgar understanding, you had to expand your mind out of the box because the contradiction that you claimed was, was your fault. You were in contradiction because you didn't know enough. That's called life. You expand out of the box, you're not out of the box. I'm sorry, but Yavamas is not out of the box. That's just called learning the breath of Torah. So you went to Yavamas, you went to Sifri, you went to the Rabban, 
you went to the Shulchan Aruch, the Bior Agra, and now we call that a scholarly rabbi. Um, just, I, we can edit this out. Yeah. Um, I am really not happy about this, but there's a, a little boy that really needs us, mm -hmm. and I have to go pick him up. Okay. He is, um, four, yeah. and he, we've been, it's more, we've been hosting, we've been hosting him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it's, the, the other side is not cooperating, but I have to pick him up. I suppose so, it's like, cut the recording right now, and just, uh... Talk about, we'll edit this out. So. No, no, no. So, no, so I want to say just, it was nice meeting you guys. That's kind of oh, stuff. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it was awesome meeting you, too. Yeah, it was really. a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys got this. So, uh, yeah. you, see, you see why it's worth it. I mean, it, it, you can't say it's not worth it. No. It's no, one it was person. It was great. It, it was really it was really great today. And just those couple little yeah. happenstance meetings. Yeah, yeah, right. Those are great. That's it. That, it, it proves the whole thing. Yes. I don't need to say yeah. anything, really. Just remember that guy. It's yes. so true. It's the whole thing. Just talk to him, not me. Leave me out of it. You know? I, I, yes. Nothing. No. We, we but, really appreciate it. You know, this is why it's it's true because it's, it's from God. It has nothing to do... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, if it came down to me telling the sources over or not, that's a big amount of issue. That guy had nothing to do with me in this book. Nothing. So you can talk about me... Okay, I admit it. I switched the sources. I did it. Guess what? Deal with that guy now. How are you going to answer that up? I plan that too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the, 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 uh, the fantastic uh, uh, feel to it doesn't matter. What was the most fantastic about it was your experience with the mazel of it. Yes. yes. So I'm saying, guess what? I'm an audience that too. I'm going to come with you. Right. It's fantastic for me. It was fantastic for you and the show. I'm an audience member just like you. Yes. I receive amazing models of stuff. Um, you say, well, Rabbi, can't. No, we all experience it together. If it was me telling you, hey, I met a guy who said he knew my work. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Come on, this is a Charlotte if I ever saw one. But there's just models of the charts. You can't. Yes. You know, Moshe Salvation's not giving me the book to translate his father. You know, and, and, and the thing is, that's Moshe Salvation's model, not mine. He's thinking about his dad and his dead son and the merit of his dead son getting the book in his name and nothing to do with me. Zero. I'm just around because I was hanging out with James Gosnell. It's James Gosnell's fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to leave. I, we actually have 15 minutes. We can stay, okay. but... Yeah. It's a bit of real pleasure. Real pleasure. Real pleasure. So, uh... Yeah. Put, put it, uh, have a good personality and personal touch. Yeah, it's got to be in person. It doesn't work online. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work online. It has to be in person. Indeed. So, thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah. very glad you guys came. Uh, I think you guys will have, God willing, a successful Yeshiva Shem neighbor. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, it's, well, even if it's one person, two people, you're two families, this is good people. You guys are you guys are solid. Thanks. Uh, thank we would have had the mazel if it wasn't. So. Here we are. Excellent. Yeah. I know what Baltimore is, Baltimoreans. So uh, <laughs> it's a real thing. Yeah, my, my yeah. brother's one of them. He's coming soon. <laughs> we so. call it, we call it small yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. But I know what Baltimore is. It's got a good energy, very strong yes. Jewish community. And stuff. I know that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. And um, that's how you, it's just. It's, there's always a reason why it's legit. I told this guy that I want to come in and be his friends, and now I know why. Hmm. We had an amazing dinner, good friends, good synagogue. synagogue. It is in the quote Russell Carter. It can't not be. <laughs> it just can't. Yeah. The mazel speaks for itself. It can't not be good. Yeah. So. Awesome. So stay in touch online. Get involved. Yes, definitely. The yeshiva is. Uh, write this down. GetSoulStrong.com. If you guys can register, it's easy and free to sign up. You'll just get <laughs> newsletters and what we're up to. We're gonna have live classes, Israel hours and American hours. Um, I'm not teaching Good. American hours because I'm not crazy anymore to do that at 3 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, but getsoulstrong.com. And you have that? Yep. All right. So tell everyone know it's uh, my version of the Shiva Shim and Aver. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, I think it's the next step where we have to go. It'll get everyone at least united. We're going to have our own little Facebook on there. Okay. So you can have your own group, your own network. Your own, it's going to be awesome. Okay. Really awesome. Uh, that way there's no more defending the point of view because you see this, in terms of this group and every, the groups that have the same experience, is there anything to defend, really? Right, yeah, exactly. It's, 
it's, it's, it, who needs it, you know? Exactly. It doesn't need convincing. Great. So, uh, it, it's going to be, I'm going to be glad to get off of Facebook, you know. It's, it had its purpose, you know, it ran its It does. Course. Yeah. It does uh, have a purpose. So. Yeah, but we're going to have our own thing, closed captioned, archive classes, I mean, Yeshiva, we're really in online Yeshiva. That's fantastic. Yeah, so it should be a, a, lot, of, a lot of good success. And my goal, at least the next year, translate and get content out. That's my thing, is just getting the content out. Excellent. Okay. Well, we look forward to more of that. Yeah. Awesome. Can I ask you some follow up questions on, on uh, 100%. Facebook or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I'll just be obviously MIA uh, until mid next week. Yeah. So, yeah. That sounds yeah. good. The, the, the biggest challenge when I do these conferences is getting people on board, not because to show them the truth, they see it, but it's just one side, you're going to see once I leave, you go about your life, it's just it's hard to digest all of this, incorporate it. I mean, Montreal is still a great group to me. And their group leader, Jessica, I mean, we're like this. She's been with me like, the longest. But the guy there, Hugo, he's just busy. Mm -hmm. And he loves it, don't And he loves it. Mm -hmm. But we're all so busy and so scattered. And not to use second guess, but it's like, we're so far, we're alone. We're only two families. Mm -hmm. Get that out of your head. Right? Right. They, okay. Everyone's got to realize that I take this where I say, take my word for it. Uh, you look just like Montreal. You look just like Cape Town. You're all the same. Mm hmm. And that's where you take my word for it, because I was there. Right. <laughs> it's not a source-based thing. I see the groups. It's the same people. Yeah. Same questions. Of why am I going to get the message the same every time? It's the same. Trust the process. Everyone's in it together, asking the same questions, yeah. wanting the same things. All I can say is just get on board together and stop wondering what they're not getting. They understand. I don't think they got it like we do. That's what everyone's tripping up on. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I'm not good enough. We're only two families. My, my Chabad rabbi won't talk to me. That's where we're at. You know, that's the real answer to gear. That's where yes. we're at. I was saying, we we got to clear that. It'll happen. It's just, it's, we, I, I mean, I, you, whatever, see the vision. It's stuck on the dumbest stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, no one questions the sources, the Torah, the message, the passion of it. Well, so. And as you, you know, get to know us, we all have certain things and if the, if you have the yeah. use for them and you yeah. want and, you know and get to know the other groups yeah uh you should join the texas groups they're good yeah. people mm -hmm. it might not be your flavor they like kabbalah you might not like Kabbalah. i don't know mm -hmm. but the cape town group i think you guys would definitely fit well with the cape town group they all have kids they're That's looking for fun. it's all the same mm -hmm. so we'll talk on facebook about where to go that sounds good and, and who to talk to um i would like if you guys network with montreal as well Montreal's yeah. got to come in. They say we're Canadian, we're Canadian, no one likes us, we're up north, yeah. we're Eskimos. I'm great. saying you're not that weird. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're all the same. Yes. We're dealing with the rabbi, the it's so it's that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think But the, you wouldn't be special if you're weird. <laughs> right. Well, I've got weird going for me. But um, also with our school, I want to start sort of blogging um, yeah. what we're doing. And well, especially, so if I'm good, I mean, my thing is content. I mean, that would be great to work with you guys if you want for the school. That'd be great. I would love, I mean, what James Gosnell really wants to talk to you, yeah. he is looking for the same thing in Chicago. Uh, I'm just off the, off, the, off the top of my head. So if we worked on content and curriculum yeah. to, to put out Yeshiva Shem and for kids, yes. I'm, I'm on board. That, that would be so great. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, that I would love it too. And I okay. know people can work can rally around that. Yeah. We can farm out some of the work Definitely. You know, to people. So I'm in 100%. Because okay. like I said. Come visit too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and teach. 100%. Um, yeah, as good. again, as, as, you know, I know this, like, you got to go. Um, you see how the care is a natural thing for community and, and, and you know, for kids. Absolutely. It just, it, it just is. Yes. You know? And I think that's what we've been craving yeah. Yeah. most of all for our kids to have that experience. Because it, it's a love of content. Mm -hmm. So what do I care if it's Lakuti Sichas or telling them about Shem Ben Noah? I mean, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But Noahidism. Noahide is not. Just, we want it to be. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But why haven't they done it? They're not doing it. And every gear, not even me, but the gear, like in, in South Africa, they're doing it. Gerim or go, they're, they're, the people that are interested in Chinuch are going gear. The ones that are interested in Chinuch are not going Noahide. I didn't cause that or choose that. Mm -hmm. It's a natural thing. So I'm definitely on board, 100 billion percent. Okay. 
of, of that. Excellent. That's great. But again, that's where my that's where my life journey began. Right. You know, teaching right. Teaching in the daycares of kids, and that's where it started. And I do it at home with my kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's what I do. That's really great. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, yeah. This, yes. Take this for Nina. Oh, thank you. If okay. you guys want to come up here, perhaps we'll see each other again. Yes. You never know. Okay. Good luck with everything. Sorry. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Are you Are you guys members of I Get Gear? Uh, I'm sorry. Are you in I Get Gear? David um, has a online issue. He can't. Uh, are you on I Get Gear? Yes. So do me a favor. Yeah. Post in there. I will. You know, blah, 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 da, 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 yeah. and, uh, and just say, make a, make a text as y'all or something. Okay. And get them, and then they'll, they'll, they'll come out of the work. It'll be very funny. It sounds okay. good. I posted something and yeah. tagged you, and I started getting a bunch of, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch so they, of them on the, there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great when everyone finds each other. It's really exciting. Okay. Sounds um, good. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the Texas and uh, Cape Town has gotten together in a very... Mm -hmm. Personal way, so uh, uh, we got we got to bring in Montreal. So I'm, I'm hoping the winter trip I can do East Coast and North again. Cause I want Montreal, and they're a great group. Yes, they just feel like they're isolated because they're not American, sure. and they don't. And Jessica doesn't speak English; she's a French speaker. Ah, okay. So uh, it's hard, but uh, the Garam the Garam group feels connected to her. Did you get one of those for? Um, yes, I mean, well, I got whatever. There's plenty of donuts, yeah, and then you, you can take yeah. whatever's left. And here, is that what, uh, you know, did you need a? You wanted a box? Yeah, yeah I'll take it home. Whatever. It's yeah. Um, yeah. Lakeisha, close a box and save one for Rabbi Katz. Honey, they're all for him. <laughs> close the box so you can take one. Morris, it was so nice great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. We'll talk soon. Okay. Is there in something in particular that you wanted to take home? It's all the same. I mean, it's, it's Dunkin' Donuts, okay. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. The whole, the, it's a kosher thing. It has a, all the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How do you enjoy yourself? You enjoy yourself? Yeah. It's yeah. very good. Yeah. I think it's it. Yeah, is it still running? Yeah. Go ahead and close it. Hi, I'll shake it up. You guys are going to eat over here. Push record, I think. and.